okay what is going on everybody today i have a very special guest to help me go over a video about relics and just kind of helping new players understand what relics are and what they do so this is black guy and he is actually the xbox olympian this year he's over conquest and we've been working together all year and he's one of my great great friends tell him a little bit um, about yourself yeah so i'm black guy i've been playing for like since the xbox beta so like four or five years now uh just recently started getting into content creation i do like meme dumb shit. If, if, if you follow me on twitter you know what i'm talking about it's kind of hard to describe it's just like really <laughs> dumb meme shit that i make yeah i'm black guy i've been playing for a long time i make content and i've recently one of the th one of the big projects i've been working on is getting into game shows i currently have two smite jeopardy and a who wants to be a millionaire parody which have been very successful and i've been trying to innovate and branch out to other game shows but other than that, yeah, I just play the game for fun. I've been Masters consistently for like two, three years. And yeah, I uh, love the game, addicted to it. I'm glad I get to work with Hyras and the other Olympians. And yeah, it's pretty much a summary of who I am as a Smite player. Yep, and I will uh, post his game shows in the video description so you guys can get uh, an idea of what they're like. They're pretty funny because he comes up with a bunch of trivia questions about Smite and then people have to try and figure it out. But basically, relics provide like special powers that are available to all gods. You get your first relic for free at level 1, and your second is unlocked once you hit level 12. You have a bunch of different relics you can go through, and we will show you what they do. So, the first one that you guys are probably going to be mostly buying in your games is Aegis. An Aegis amulet, using this item, it makes you invulnerable to damage in healing for 1.5 seconds, and it prevents you from doing anything, basically like auto-attacking or using abilities. So you want to use these against some very high-powered, high-damage ultimates, kind of like Raw, so we're gonna kind of demonstrate how Aegis works. And that pretty much would have made me, what do you think, like more than halfway you, you help? Would, yeah, you would like you <laughs> yeah. You would like and so Aegis is super strong, uh, and you guys will mostly be using this, but it might actually help you do some really cool counterplay opportunities and it definitely helps you counter a whole bunch of stuff this is going to sound stupid but Aegis, in my opinion is actually one of the more difficult relics to use uh because like there's super easy stuff to Aegis, such as like vulcan ult or poseidon ult. like that's super easy because there's visual and audio cues but for stuff like raw ult like let's like she was staring at me when she used her Aegis, but mm -hmm. like let's say around i'm like around the corner and she can't see or hear me as soon as she hears the raw ult she's immediately going to press Aegis because you just don't really bank on people missing abilities so like i'm just going to ult here and as soon as kitten hears it well yep. i guess she's has terrible re oh wait no <laughs> <I don't... laughs> <laughs> yeah i have the cooldown but yeah you can just see it can save your life on tons of occasions and if you don't have it or sometimes a lot of people misuse it and don't even Aegis any damage then you're kind of screwed a little bit yeah but... yeah and the reason i say Aegis is difficult to use because like like I said, there are instances where it is easy to use, such as Poseidon ult and Vulcan ult, but it's really difficult, in my personal opinion, to read when damage is incoming that isn't obvious. So like, what a lot of people will do is only use it right when they're about to die, and at that point, it's just kind of a waste because they're dead anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's it just got to kind of get a feel for it. Um, sound cues are very, very important, which is why I picked Raw, because Raw has a very loud sound cue. Same with Thoth. Thoth has a very loud sound cue, and if you hear that, and like from a sound cue from somebody that's on the other team you might just want to press Aegis because like yeah there's a chance they'll miss but if they don't miss and you end up Aegising then it's going to be a lot more worth versus if you bank on them missing and you don't Aegis and they actually kill you so and um each relic has an upgrade effect which costs 500 gold and we typically you don't want to upgrade these until late game when you have all of your items and everything but the upgrade only takes the cooldown down to like 150 seconds since Aegis and Beads, which we'll go over next, are pretty powerful. Okay, guys, the next one, we're going over Purification Beads, and basically using this removes crowd control effects and makes you immune to new ones for two seconds. And this basically removes soft crowd control and hard crowd control. And so we'll kind of go over what soft crowd control is, because right now um, Raw has like a slow 
I can't remember what it is. But is it a slow in his too? Yeah, it's a slow. It's a slow and a blind. Um, slow, and then I can beads for that immunity. There's like a soft CC option. And then a wheel exult is definitely something way more than that, where if you knock him up and ult him, it takes, normally it would take the raw to me, but he can beads and it'll just keep him safe. But a lot of times you can just counter tons and tons of gods with both of these relics. And so just learning what you can beads and what you can Aegis to save you will really help you a lot. It's, in my opinion, beads is like a fairly easy to use relic where the only skill that re or that comes with it is like reaction timing. So like, as you saw with Kitten's demonstration, when she knocked me up, I was able to beat before her ult went off. But like, if I could tell that Kitten was about to three me, she threw me real quick. Okay, I did that wrong. <laughs> yeah, but, and well, you can me... completely waste your uh, yeah, beads you see... if you do it the wrong time. So that's something yeah. else. See, like, right there was a poor use of beads, but, like, even when I'm knocked up in the air, let's say Kitten doesn't have ult and she was chasing me down, and if I used beads poorly like I did there and I was knocked up, beads won't help me get to the ground quicker. Mm -hmm. So I'll still be in the air. So the only, like, quote, skill that comes with beads is reaction timing, in my opinion, because if I did beads the knock up, then I wouldn't have gotten knocked up in the air in the first place, and then that would give the enemy less time to catch up to me or whatever they're trying to do. So yeah, there I was completely knock up immune, and let's say Kitten were chasing me in the jungle, and she tried to knock me up, and I beats it before I was knocked up, and there was a very low chance she would have killed me there, even if she didn't have ultimate, because nothing would have happened to me at all. So again, beads, in my opinion, relatively easy relic to use. The only timing that, or the only skill that comes with it is just like when you use it, and the timing of when you use it. Yep, and learning about all the types of soft and hard crowd control might help you a lot as well, just learning all of the types of abilities that do different things and god ultimates all that fun stuff but that'll probably take a little bit oh and you can't bleed beads a blind either which is i don't know but i always thought that was interesting that you can't like beads it just to see so that's like one of the things that'll be a little bit weird different Okay guys, uh, the next two we're gonna go over is Shell and Sprint. Um, these are typically more supporty type relics, so guardians and maybe warriors sometimes, but a lot, these are definite guardian relics for sure. With Shell, using it applies a shield to themselves and allies within 35 units, and basically you just get a shield that protects you against damage. Uh, one thing I wanna add is Shell, so usually, People don't upgrade relics until the very, very end, and I think Shell is one of the exceptions. Upgraded Shell is so much better than unupgraded Shell, and that's because upgraded Shell absorbs two autos, mm -hmm. which can be literally life-saving. So if you're playing support and you pick up Shell, you might want to consider upgrading it early after like your third or fourth item if they have auto attack gods on the other team. You see right here, that extra blue bar is that shell. So it can absorb a lot of damage and actually it does it to all of your teammates around you. And I think he's gonna go switch teams and then you can see what it looks like on a teammate also. So let's say he's just getting damaged and pretty low. Even though this Neath bot doesn't do anything, you can apply this to your teammate and it'll block those two autos and give him that additional health shield. And there's been plenty of times where I've saved teammates and people have saved me with this relic, so I would say this is a definite pickup on a lot of supports. The only thing I'd add is if you really don't know what to go on support and even sometimes solo, uh, Shell is like, ne Shell's really never a bad choice. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you aren't sure what to go, like, yeah, there might be better relics, but if you don't know what the better relics are in that situation, it's never like, bad to go shell next one is heavenly wings um it used to be called sprint basically it's just a big movement increased for yourself and all allies within an area so i'll just demonstrate this we're just a lot quicker um usually i tend to use this as an engage or a disengage if you're trying to get a lot of your team out of something or 
it really can counter a lot of ultimates, kind of like Baka and Cupid, a lot of ults that slow. And so this is the Baka slow and he's gonna, ha he would normally have tons of minions so I could just sprint myself and my team out of it and it helps out quite a bit. And especially with Cupid's ult when it's such a big AOE area and you're trying to get yourself and teammates out of it, it comes in handy a lot. Uh, upgraded sprint or heavenly wings, it just allows you to, when you're autoing, you see how I'm slowed, it'll prevent you from being slowed when you're autoing. So like if you're just autoing, you're slowed, but if you sprint, you can just run around like a crackhead and you won't lose any movement speed penalty, so. Yep, it's basically like old Hasten Fatalis and that's super good on like, you know, auto-based assassins or all, basically all hunters. So those are the two typical relics I would recommend with supports, especially if you don't know which relic to get. Okay, the next relic we got is Blink, and using this will just allow you to teleport up to 45 units away instantly, and it cannot be used if you have taken damage or dealt damage within the last three seconds. So basically, you see that it keeps going off cooldown when he hits me. But if I, and especially if you uh, want to get out of a situation, you can just blink away and that'll get you farther away from someone. This is also really great for engaging and catching people off guard a lot. Um, a lot of assassins use this and it's, I don't know, would you say it's one of the most powerful relics in the game? I think oh, it's, it's really a, it's good. The best, I think it's the best relic in the game. Like, yeah. it's consistently picked up by three plus people every single game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just is so good to put distance, like just close the distance between you and another person and it's good on so many different gods and especially assassins and guardians. With guardians you can just blink in and AoE ult a lot of people. The, um, thing, about blink, the thing about blink is like usually characters will have abilities that like does something and gets them closer. So what Blink allows them to do is use their escape without using it as an initiation. So mm -hmm. like for like for Nike, like some people will even buy Blink on Nike. Like usually what Nike will do is like maybe jump in and then ult and use her combo. But what Blink allows her to do is save her jump so she can Blink and then use her combo. And then if she gets low, she still has the option to jump out. And she also has the option to like jump to do damage if needed, if she doesn't need to use it as, a, uh, mm -hmm. as an escape, which is one reason why it's so strong because you can hold your escape to actually use it as an escape and it gives you the option to either escape or use it to do damage. And with Susano, it's especially scary because he can just blink, use all of his combo and one shot you pretty much. So it definitely can be scary once you think a god is in a certain place and then he's just right in front of your face so i think that is kind of blink and basically the upgrade is after using it you gain a 10 percent damage mitigation so this is huge because sometimes if you just blink in to a bunch of people you can take a bunch of damage and especially on a guardian that wants to blink in and ult everybody, but it's super good with assassins so that they can have a little bit of tankiness while trying to like engage and get a kill on people. It isn't worth upgrading early though. Yeah, I would probably say wait until late game after you've got all of your stuff, but it can definitely be pretty potent just with like blink ulting and like you said, you would just have your jump to get out of it. Right, and kind of an unpopular one that you don't see too often is Sundering Spear. <laughs> Using it um, fires a bolt that travels 70 units, stopping on the first god hit, dealing 15% of the target's current health as true damage, and destroying any shields. So he is going to demonstrate that on me. Um, let's do, or get me a little bit lower so that you can see the shield and stuff so nike's ult gives her a ginormous shield and then if he sunders me 
I basically lose all of that shield and some health as well. So this can be, before Sunder used to not be able to do that, but they added that since it's never been picked up and to counter shields. So against Nike and Geb, it's super it's pretty good. Much a direct, it's pretty much a direct counter to Nike. Exactly. And do any other gods have shields that I'm not aware of? I mean, you like Yamoja, but oh, yeah. the only shields that are like worth using Sunder on, in my opinion, are like Geb and Nike. Like pretty much if there's a Nike on the other team, you want to pick up Sunder, not even on an Assassin. Like usually it's picked up on support, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's solely to counter the Nike. Um, other than that, uh, Sunder isn't normally bought on Assassins. It's actually normally bought on like the support or like the solo laner, sometimes Assassins, but that's very rare. And it's usually used to get early, like, to get an early pressure or early lead. Um, and when I say like it's usually picked up on support, that's because they'll upgrade it early and then they'll literally just run it down the duo lane and just lock people down and get you or get their adc ahead so like it's used on a lot of herc supports it's used on a lot of erlong supports and they always upgrade it early and then they'll just lock down the enemy adc and make sure that they don't have a fun time mm -hmm. playing the game, so and be careful with it because it's basically a line attack for a relic which is kind of different and so yeah it has this line attack and it can be missed and you won't get any of the effect so you can want to be careful with it maybe get someone you know one of your teammates to cc someone and then use the sunder but i definitely agree using that on like a support or really aggressive support would be the play um and then if you're directly wanting to counter a god that's giving you a hard time like nike or geb upgrading it is just increasing the damage taken for 20 percent instead of 15. So. Also, something worth noting is it doesn't prevent a shield, it only destroys a shield. It's like if I use it and then kitten ults. So it doesn't <laughs> prevent a shield, it only destroys a shield. Mm -hmm. So like if, you, if you're if you like, oh, they have a Geb, I'm going to pick up Sunder, and then you Sunder somebody, they get a shield. Like, no. So it's pretty much only picked up if you have a really aggressive support or if there's a Nike on the other team. So next two we're going over is Thorns or Shield of Thorns. Um, using this reflects 40% of all damage you take before mitigations for the next five seconds back to the other player as magical damage. And if you're dealt 150, what is that, times your level? Yeah, basically reflecting damage that they're dealing to you. All right, and so when you activate it, it's also dealing damage to him when he's dealing damage to me. So you can see how powerful it is when it almost took him when he almost died by thorns as well. So a lot of you usually solo laners will use this Dep kind of depends on like the guardian because guardians can go in solo lane also. But if you have just an aggressive guardian or warrior, they typically like to get thorns and just go on the adc and pop that and the adc trying to defend themselves or hurt them will end up hurting themselves so it can be a pretty uh good relic to use against adcs and even big mage ultimates like vulcan or Ra, Scylla, they can end up killing themselves if they ult someone with thorns so like one thing people will do which is which will really piss off the adc or like the mid laners if they have an ult with like a lingering effect or like damage over time such as ho Yi or zeus if they're like running away from somebody and like the support or whoever's chasing you is out of range like they'll ult to try to escape and slow you down but then they will literally just pop thorns and run into it and You're not scared of anyone. <laughs> yeah. works works really well on like against a ho Yi or like a zeus whose ultimates like stay there for a long time and do a lot of damage over time yeah, it's like one of the most troll ways to kill somebody, and it's just hilarious every time, so... Thorns can be pretty fun. And the upgraded version just adds, while this is active, enemies can only lifesteal from you for 50% of their total lifesteal, so would you want to get lifesteal just to show that? So, like, here's the all auto her three times, and I went up, like, 200 health, but if she pops thorns... 
I'm not even gonna heal like at all. I'm gonna yep. I was healing for like 47 in auto or healing for 47 HP in auto, so like 90 or whatever I was healing for. Yep, and he probably would have uh, killed himself if he would have kept autoing me. So a lot of hunters generally don't like this relic yes. because yes. Dude, if you see a big purple shield, do not auto it. Yep. Holy God. It's Please almost like it. it's almost like a free Aegis for like the solo laner because like the hunter will just not auto them and just try and run away. <laughs> only auto them if their thorns is popped and you're like not chasing them down or like okay you don't typically you don't want to auto people that have thorns popped the only times you do is if they're like literally about to die or if your entire team is just collapsing on this one person because the other team's damage will offset your damage so mm -hmm. you won't take as much because you'll be doing a less percentage of their health next up we got frenzy and using this grants all allied gods within 70 units 10% increased damage dealt to all targets, including objectives, and 50%, 15% attack speed for five seconds. Um, this is another pretty aggressive relic that a lot of supports can get if you want to just buff your whole team while getting Fire Giant or taking down a bunch of towers and everything like that. It's a uh, Pretty good relic that I don't see too often, um, but I think it's underrated a little bit. But yeah, just use it to engage in a lot of team fights, and you can give that extra advantage to your team with all that extra damage and attack speed. And even if you have like two ADCs, like you have a mid hunter, this would be a really good relic to pick up for them too. So Kitten mentioned you could use it to engage, but what you can do to kind of like mind the enemy team is also use it to disengage, which sounds dumb, right? But the thing is, like if you're if you're on the enemy team and you see, or if you're on the other team and you see somebody pop frenzy, your first instinct isn't gonna be, oh, let's go attack them. Mm -hmm. So like if you're trying to disengage, you can pop your frenzy and try to like psych them out into not full committing to you. But at that usually doesn't work at higher <laughs> levels, but like it's still is a trick like if you ha haven't used frenzy and you're disengaging you might just want to pop it just to see if you can psych the enemy team out um but other than that yeah just like what kitten said use it in the middle of a fight use it to engage use it when you're sieging use it when you're doing any objectives like even if you're not fighting the other team like let's say you know where the enemy team is and you only have like a certain amount of time to take an objective such as gold fury or fire giant you can just pop it just to burn it as or just to burn the objective as quickly as possible yep um i didn't really think about that how you could just do that to scare them away from you because definitely when i've hear when i hear a uh, frenzy is popped you get scared because you're like oh no yeah. they're coming for us yeah. so again that doesn't usually work at like higher level play like masters or higher but like it it, st it still gets people like it'll get people. like you, you could be losing the fight and you'll pop frenzy and the other team will be like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really true so um i would say if you're even like pretty ahead you know why not pop it or put on a frenzy if you are ahead in support or even solo just to get that extra like snowball effect of running them down with frenzy all right next Relic is Bracer of Undoing, and using this restores 40% health and mana lost within the last 5 seconds. This is basically used with uh, in Duel a lot, I would say. I don't see it too often. Don't it's, buy it in Conquest. Yeah, ever. pretty much don't buy it in Conquest. It can be good against gods that get you low really quick. Um, so like Kibo, we can demonstrate that. And then I... Just heal for a little bit of health so it can be good um in 1v1 situations but yeah i'd agree um pretty much on conquest i don't see it too much and yeah. i don't see it dude very well so this is an example of why it's never bought <gasps> see how little she healed so and it counts as a heal the bracer well, this sounds dumb, but the Bracer Heal counts as a heal. It's not like a restoration. It's like, it's a heal. So mm -hmm. anti-heal does affect it. And as you can see there, I literally had like 80% anti-heal on her. And she just healed for absolutely nothing, which is why it's usually never picked up. It's usually only ever picked up in Duel, not Conquest. Because people see you have a Bracer, they'll buy anti-heal, and then your Bracer does pretty much nothing. 
Okay, and next one is Curse Donk, and using this relic reduces the healing received by all enemy gods within 55 units by 50% for 10 seconds and removes 50% of any currently applied shields. So kind of like Sunder, this also affects shields as well, just in case if you guys were wondering. Um, Ankh is really good against gods that can heal your that can heal their team. So kind of like Hell, Changa, and Afro. So if you don't want the enemy team healing at all, you would onk them and their whole team, and so a Hell wouldn't be able to uh, heal at all. So it's a pretty good counter to healers. If there is a lot of gods that do healing on the other team, it'd be a pretty good pickup. Uh, let's just pretend the black guy hit his ult there. <laughs> I don't play Hevo, I play Hunters. <laughs> but yeah, I would say that's the basic pickup for Ankh. And I mean, would you want to just pick this up for only sh if you're wanting to reduce shields? Would you say it's pr better than Sunder? Because it is like an AoE. No, nah, if you're. I wouldn't do it just to reduce shields, only to buy it for healers, in my opinion. Yeah. So a couple things that Kitten didn't really mention is to show off how strong it is. Uh, if it's combined with other forms of anti-heal, you can literally bring it to 100% anti-heal. So, like, heal. Yep. Yeah, she literally healed for nothing. So, like, if you combine it with other forms of anti-heal, they will not be able to heal for a solid 6 to 7 seconds. Other than that, uh, its upgraded effect causes 20% more damage if they heal. So, like, if an enemy tries to heal while they have upgraded Ankh on them, they will take more damage. So what people will do is like, if they have something that has a tick heal, such as the Sylvanas, they'll wait for the heal to go off, then they'll Ankh. So the entire team that's getting healed by the Sylvanas tick or the Hell tick will take a crap ton more damage. Mm -hmm. It can be really good to counter healers, even um, just with buying anti-heal items, like in team fights, the healers are just way good, you know, because they can sustain their team through a whole bunch of damage. But if you just pop that and no one can heal, then you guys are in pretty good shape, I'd say. Ankh is typically bought on aggressive supports and solo laners. ADCs, mids, and junglers don't normally pick it up. Okay, and getting down to the last couple, we got Phantom Veil with this fun little ghost guy. Um, using this item allows you and allied gods within 35 units to pass through players and player made objects. And this is definitely, I would say, a targetable, like you own a situational relic where you pick it up against a few specific gods. And those gods would be like um, Odin and Umoja specifically. And then if you have issues with like Kabraken or Thor or Ymir walls, you can w walk through those walls as well. So like right now I can't go through this, but if I Phantom, I can go through Yamoja ult. And same thing if I ult her, she can't go through my ring unless she Phantoms. So uh, definitely very situational and the upgraded version, it only, it provides 15% um, damage mitigation for five seconds. So, I mean, it gives you a little bit extra with that, but um, yeah, just pretty much pick it up if you have issues with getting through certain gods' abilities. No, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like Kitten said, only pick it up against gods that have like really impactful walls, such as Yemoja or Odin. Um, this is a relic that's you that can no, no. I'll rephrase that. This is a relic that is also picked up by multiple people if they're really struggling. And I guess the only thing you need to worry about if that happens is make sure you don't use both at the same time. You just gotta coordinate with your team, like who's using it first and who's using it second. Mm -hmm. And generally, um, like if a mage or hunter would ever get this, is because if they don't have an escape or a jump to get out of the wall or to get over the walls. But if your support is pretty good about being with you, he can, the support can just phantom you out of a lot of stuff with that. It does have a cooldown though, so you won't be saved every like ultimate that comes your way. So just keep an eye on that. It's 150 seconds. And then even with the, the upgrade, it's also, it also stays the same. 
All right, and next one we got Meditation Cloak and using this restores 75 health plus 12 health per level and 30% mana to all allied gods within 35 units. This is the relic that is in the tutorial and a lot of people get mad that beginning players use this and I would say it's not a bad relic for a beginner, but it's definitely not the best. I mean, you know, it is nice that it restores some health and it's like a big AoE, so it also restores some of the health of your teammates, but um, I would say it's not the best. If you feel comfortable with that, feel free to use it, but med a lot of the time is only used in assault because assault you can't back and heal at the fountain. So you can stay out longer if you have med on like five of your teammates. There are situations where you can like med bait people where they think that they're going to get you low or kill you and you just med and you can turn around on them. Um, Med, like, okay, this is going to sound like harsh, but med literally you, you just don't buy it. Um, yeah. it has two it has two niche uses as or in Chang'e solo. So if you're playing Chang'e in the solo lane, med is a very good relic there. And also, it is a very nice use against gods with executes, because if gods are under a certain threshold of health, then there are certain gods that can execute them and just instantly kill them. Mm -hmm. So what people will do is they will buy meditation, and then when they see that an enemy is about to ult one of your teammates that's within execute range, you can, he you can instantly heal them to get them above the execute threshold, and then the enemy god won't be able to execute them. Uh, but that even then, like when a god with an execute such as Thanatos or Achilles or Alquang is on the other team, they usually still don't go med because of anti-heal. Meditation is a heal, so it is affected by anti-heal, and I can show that off really quickly. So like meditation does count as a heal, so it is affected by anti-heal. So as you can see, if I just do this to Kitten and then she's med, she's gonna yeah, she got healed for like literally nothing. So that's mm -hmm. another reason why meditation isn't picked up like ever, because it does go for anti-heal. The only time I would like ever build it outside of Assault is if the enemy team has an Execute God and nobody on your team has healing in their kit because then the other team is more than likely to not buy anti-heal. Or if you're just playing Chang'e solo and that's because it's good as Chang'e or in Chang'e in the solo lane, so. Um, upgraded version of Meditation. Allies affected by Meditation have their abilities mana cost reduced by 30% and their ability cooldowns reduced by one second. So that's kind of like an interesting thing but I wouldn't say it really it's still not worth picking up just for the upgraded version as well we got horrific emblem up next and using this item slows the movement speed of all enemy gods within 35 units by 30 percent for five seconds their attack speed is also reduced by 15 percent and we'll go ahead and show that right now so I am super slow and I would say a lot of soul laners end up picking this. Even some supports. Would you say aggressive supports more often? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Flick and I like to run this shit in the dual lane. It's fun. <laughs> but it can be pretty good uh, if you're trying to get some kills on the enemy team and they can't run away. You definitely want to pick that up. And the upgrade for that, the damage, is, damage dealt is reduced by 15%. So not only are they slowed and their attack speed is reduced, you all they also do less damage to you and your team if they're affected by this. So it is a pretty good team fight relic in Conquest, I would say. And if you have just uh, aggressive support or solo lane, then definitely look on picking this up. Uh, like Kitten said, it's usually only picked up by solo lane and support, and it's usually only in support if they have an aggressive or if you have an aggressive support. Like, so what some people will do is they will just buy it level one, then hopefully try to get a kill by level one, two, or three. But other than that, just use it in the middle of team fights, or if you're trying to run people down, or if you're trying to escape from people, you can pop it when people are nearby so you can outrun them. And last but not least, we are going to be going over teleport. And using this relic allows you to teleport to any allied tower while being rooted in place. And this effect is not interrupted by damage, but is interrupted by crowd control. If you purchase the upgraded version of teleport, you are then able to teleport to allied wards as well. So this is typically only used in conquest for solo laners. 
it's super useful for them to get back to lane quickly so that they don't lose out on any farm or have too much damage to go to their tower. Even when they get low health, they can just back and be instantly back in lane. So it's a great tool for solo lane and I would only recommend it for solo lane and definitely can come in handy for a late game when you're trying to group up with your team. You can teleport to a ward near them or you can teleport to a tower if someone's pushing it or you can now teleport to phoenixes if someone is split pushing a phoenix. Also, sorry for not getting game footage of teleporting to a ward, but I had some problems in the custom lobby with some weird lag issues. Okay guys, and that is all of the relics we have. I hope that this helped out a little bit. Um, I know Smite isn't too great of explaining what relics are and what they do, especially, so Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm going to be linking Black Guy's Twitter and YouTube, all that fun stuff, so you can check him out as well. He's funny sometimes, so. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. We'll see ya. Wait! <laughs> I wasn't ready. <sighs> okay. And that is how you not use Aegis. <laughs> that is how you definitely not go Sunder and then why? Oh. <laughs> going in the blooper. <laughs> Why'd you move? <laughs>